What is Somtum? Somtum or papaya salad is one of the best known, most loved salads in Thailand and surrounding Southeast Asian countries. Even if you've never been to Thailand, I'm sure you've heard of Som Tam, the most famous Thai salad. The dish combines the five main basic tastes, sourness of the lime, the spiciness of the chili, saltiness and savoriness of the fish sauce, and sweetness of palm sugar. The ingredients are mixed and pounded in a mortar. Som Tam is one of the most commonly available, and most popularly consumed dishes in all of Thailand. Originating in the northeastern part of Thailand or Isan, the dish is a staple for the entire area. Nowadays, you will now find Somtam everywhere throughout Thailand, as well as on just about every street corner in the entire city of Bangkok. While Somtam is a signature dish in Laos, Cambodia, and Thailand, it's the Thai version that is the most famous. However, food historians believe that this dish originated in Laos. This is because Somtam is especially popular in Thailand's northeastern region of Isan, which shares a border with Laos. What's more, papaya and chili have been key ingredients in Laotian cuisine since the 1800s. Somtam was originally called Tam Bok Hung in Isan dialect. Bok Hung translates to papaya. Tam translates to pounded. Considering how it is made, it makes sense that Somtam was once called pounded papaya. The name change came as a result of mass migration from the Isan region to Bangkok. Migrant workers shared their love of the Tum Bok whom they grew up eating. With both the recipe and the name changing over time for Somtam to become the street market staple it is today. In the 1950s and 1960s glutinous rice, roast chicken, larb, somtam, and other Isan favorites were available in Bangkok only around the boxing stadium, where northeastern boxers and fans gathered to eat and drink before and after boxing matches. Isan food could also be found outside construction sites, in mobile food carts providing construction workers from the northeast with their regional foods, and beside gas stations serving long-distance bus drivers. At the conclusion of the Vietnam War, between 1975 and 1995, it was estimated that approximately 200,000 Lao refugees crossed the Mekong River into Thailand. Most stayed in the refugee camps while other moved to Bangkok looking for work. With the opening of the Mitrapap Road and the Northeastern Railway connecting central Thailand to northern provinces not only brought jobs and development to the region, it also created a gateway for one of Thailand's biggest inter-regional migration during the economic boom of the 1980s as demands for labor increased. It was estimated that between 1980 to 1990, approximately 1 million northeasterners had moved from the northeast to central Thailand and Bangkok. This, in turn, helped popularize and create an unprecedented demand for Isan food outside of the northeast. Now without a doubt, Somtam can be considered the Thai national dish. Everybody eats it almost every day. It is more than a meal. It is an entire social experience. A group of Thai folks, usually women, will share the preparation of a large dish of Somtam, and then sit down and eat it together, often accompanied by a basket full of kanam jean or rice noodles, and various fresh vegetables such as yard long beans, morning glory and cabbage. Different Types of Som Tam Som Tam Thai This is one of the mildest versions, where the dressing is sweet and sour. Som Tam Bupara This is a very common version that uses fermented fish sauce and pickled crab in the recipe. Tam Ba Literally translates to jungle Som Tam This Som Tam includes all sorts of things like freshwater snails, Thai eggplant, and pickled bamboo shoots. Tamswa. This version includes papaya, fermented fish sauce, and rice noodles. When you're in Thailand, if you go to an Isan restaurant, or street food stall, you can choose to order whatever type of somtam you prefer. What foods pair well with somtam? 
A unique pairing of ingredients makes Som Tam as fragrant as it is delicious. It can be enjoyed alone or as part of a larger meal. Grilled fish and chicken are often eaten with Som Tam. Som Tam is almost always served with sticky rice. Sticky rice takes away the sting of the hot peppers. What are the typical Som Tam ingredients? The first is green papaya. Papaya is used in Southeast Asian cooking, both raw and cooked. In some parts of Asia, the young leaves of the papaya are steamed and eaten like spinach. In Lao and Thai cuisine, unripe green papayas are used to make som tam, it is also used in Thai curries, such as kaeng som. Papaya is native to Mesoamerica, which is currently in the area of southern Mexico to Central America, before being brought into Southeast Asia during the Ayutthaya period. Both papaya fruit and its latex are rich in papayan, a protease used for tenderizing meat and other proteins. In traditional medicine, papaya leaves have been used as a treatment for malaria, an abortifacient, a purgative, or smoke to relieve asthma. Chili Chili peppers are believed to have originated somewhere in Central or South America, and were first cultivated in Mexico. After the Colombian exchange, many cultivars of chili pepper spread around the world used for both food and traditional medicine. This led to a wide variety of cultivars. Chili peppers are widely used in many cuisines as a spice to add heat to dishes. Capsaicin and related compounds known as capsaicinoids are the substances giving chili peppers their intensity, when ingested or applied topically. Garlic Scientists now know that most of garlic's health benefits, are caused by sulfur compounds formed when a garlic clove is chopped, crushed, or chewed. The sulfur compounds from garlic enter your body from the digestive tract. They then travel all over your body, exerting strong biological effects. Garlic is low in calories and rich in vitamin C, vitamin B6, and manganese. It also contains trace amounts of various other nutrients. Yardlong beans, they are a good source of protein, vitamin A, thiamine, riboflavin, iron, phosphorus, and potassium, and a very good source for vitamin C, folate, magnesium, and manganese. Tomatoes are a significant source of umami flavor. Tomatoes are a good source of several vitamins and minerals, such as vitamin C, potassium, vitamin K, and folate. Tomatoes may reduce your risk of heart disease and several cancers. This fruit is also beneficial for skin health, as it may protect against sunburns. Lemons Lemons are native to Southeast Asia. People in this region know and has been taking advantage of lemons for a long time. Lemon juice is used to flavor sour in many types of food. It is also used as a drink mixed with salt and sugar as lemon juice, which is well known both in Thailand and around the world. Lemon is a fruit that contains many organic acids such as citric acid, malic acid, vitamin C from lemon juice, and essential oil from lemon peel. Lemon contains vitamins A and C, they also contain higher levels of calcium, and phosphorus than lemon juice. Lemon is useful as a herbal medicine, expectorant, cough, scurvy, swollen gums, and recognized to help the deteriorated facial skin peel off while also stimulating the creation of new cells, helping to fade dark spots or scars. Para, para is produced by fermenting fish with rice bran, or roasted rice flour and salt fermented in a closed container for at least six months. Para is classified by its main ingredients. Para that is fermented with roasted rice powder will become yellow with a soft and distinctive smell. Mostly used as a paste, this type of para is usually produced in central Thailand. This type of para usually has striped snakehead fish or catfish as a main ingredient. The other type is para fermented with rice bran. The product's color is clear black with a stronger smell. The fish is softer and smaller. It is mostly found in northeastern Thailand as an ingredient or as a raw food. There are differing methods to produce para. 
One method holds that there are two phases for making para. The first phase is to ferment fish with salt until it is softer, and the next phase is to ferment it with rice bran, or roasted rice powder for its scent and flavor. A second approach is to ferment the fish with salt and coarsely pounded, toasted, raw glutinous rice for at least six months. The process starts with cutting the fish into small pieces and fermenting it with salt. After 24 hours, the fish is arranged in a container, mostly a pot, until it is tightly packed and filled with salt water afterwards. The container is sealed for three months. After three months, a first stage para will be mixed with rice bran or roasted rice powder. Then, it will be rearranged in the container and sealed for two months or more. Fish sauce, in Thailand is called Nam Pa, also used in Thai cuisine. In Thailand, fish sauce is used both in cooking and also served at the table as a condiment, for instance in noodle soups. Nearly every Thai meal is served with, Prik Nam Pa as a condiment, a mixture of fish sauce, lime juice and chopped bird's eye chilies. Sliced garlic is often added to this sauce. Historically, there were two types of fish sauce made in Thailand, that made with a freshwater fish, pa soy, and sauce made from a saltwater fish, pa kra tak. Either fish is fermented for at least 8 months, 3 parts fish to 2 parts salt. The resulting mash is filtered. This yields the best fish sauce called the base. And the dregs are then mixed with water and salt, and again fermented for 3 to 4 months. This yields a second grade fish sauce, mostly used in cooking. Across Thailand, you will find similar combinations of these somtam ingredients. Although, some street market vendors add extra palm sugar to lessen the kick of the chilies, or fermented fish or para for a pungent twist. But beyond these variations, the most important factors are the crunchy texture of the unripe papaya, and the combination of different taste sensations. Each region seemingly has its own version of this dish, so visitors are surprised almost every time they devour Som Tum. The most globally recognized version Som Tum is Som Tum Thai as it is possibly the most palatable, and does not contain any of the more pungent of ingredients that some versions do. The core ingredients users are chilies, fresh garlic, dried shrimp, fish sauce, palm sugar too, peanuts, juicy limes, tomatoes, yard-long beans, and green papaya. As for Som Tam Bu Para is less sweet and, more savory, compared to Som Tam Thai, pickled crab and Thai eggplant is often added to Som Tam, and a fermented fish paste is used instead of fish sauce. Som Tam is one of the healthiest foods that are low in fat and energy, but contains dietary fiber and has a high nutritional value. Can you eat Som Tum to lose weight? Som Tum menu is a popular weight loss food menu of professional weight loss professionals. We often hear advice that if you want to get thin quickly without danger, do not rely on diet pills to eat Som Tum, especially in the late evening dinner, if it is Som Tum, how much does it actually not get fat? If you want to make it delicious try this cool recipe. Ingredients 2 cups shredded green papaya 1 half cup yard long beans cut into one long 2 tablespoons fish sauce 1 and a half tablespoons palm sugar 3 tablespoons lime juice 1 half cup tomato wedged 1 third cup dried shrimps 1 fourth cup peanuts 10 green chilies 5 cloves fresh garlic Preparations one use motor and pressel to crush the chili and garlic, add shrimps, continue crushing. Two add sugar, continue beating with the pressel, then add the papaya, yard long beans, fish sauce, lime juice, tomato, and peanuts. Continue beating until all ingredients mixed well. Three finally, season with sugar, fish sauce, or lime. The original taste this dish should be the balanced taste between sweet, hot, salty, and sour. 4. Serve with vegetables, cabbage, yard-long beans, morning glory, 
Thai people love to eat sticky rice with som tum. In this case, sticky rice can be served together with finished som tum. Isn't it easy to make som tum the Thai food recipe?